Next slides show a few examples of how vector art can be created and manipulated in Photoshop. This, this example of the tricky feline shows both text converted to shapes and custom shapes with color, patterns, textures, effect, etc. applied. We can't emphasize enough the important role working with vector art plays for non-destructive editing. Everything you see on screen is fully and, in, and independently editable. The layers panel shows the effects that were applied to end up with this result. It is important to personalize any shapes made in Photoshop using the custom shape tool. If you use a stock imagery, it will look stock. What makes your design special if everyone can make it with an easy click of the mouse? In this example, we used a stock image of a flower, but we customized it to look more like it was free form or blowing in the wind. We did so by activating the path and then selecting each anchor point one at a time using the direct selection tool. When an anchor point is selected, any directional lines attached to it will appear as they did in the example on the right side of the screen. We then grabbed the handlebars and tweaked them until we were happy with the results. You can see the original orange flower and the edited white flower are not that much different, but the slight personalization we did to the petal makes the flower look like our flower and not the stock flower available to all, to all Photoshop users. In addition to editing the anchor points and directional, uh, we also changed the shape color to white and added an outer glow using layer effects. Finally, we added a second custom shape of a snail to finish our design. We didn't customize a snail, but if we did, we could make the antennae look wiggly or change the shape of the show or even extend the length of the tail. One last thing to note before we wrap up this lecture is about smart objects. Don't forget, you can make any layer in Photoshop a smart object. If you make a shape a smart object, you can always double click it to open the .psb file. Do all of your editing, editing inside that smart object.psb file and then save to accept the changes and they will automatically flow into your actual Photoshop document. This helps keep your main Photoshop.psd document from getting cluttered up with too many layers um, for editing. That about wraps up our lesson on vector art in Photoshop. If you have any questions or need any help at any time during the semester, you can always email your instructor at the email address listed on the course syllabus.